happy Friday. I hope you guys are doing great. Oh, my volume. Individuals at the South Side Condo, South Surfside, my bad, Surfside Condo in Miami. Just oh, big prayers for for. I hope they find people still survivors. So big love and prayers to their families and for those that were we lost and those that are injured. So all love for the families. Um, yeah, so it is Friday. It is Pride Weekend. What a week this has been. Um, I got something really special in the mail today from one of my former guests, uh, previous guests, I should say, Maxwell Waterman. Yes! He sent me a t-shirt from House of Ananda. And it says, um, Kiki with your soul. Kiki with your soul. Yeah, so thank you, Maxwell Waterman. I'm going to be wearing this in Philly this weekend. And also, I'd also like to big up again, Chloe Davis's book, The Queen's English. The link to her book is in my bio. It's a fabulous book of, you know, all things LGBTQIA+. The kids, honey, the kiki. So yes, let me bring up some photos of my guest today and Mr. Daniel Gwertzman. Actually, this one is from 2013, I believe. Turn my music down. 2013 and we were all together I think this is actually the last time we were in the same space together that I know of um, this is with Martha Graham I had Martha Graham at Central Park summer stage and he came along with uh, my good friend Jermall Barnes and there's Christian Von Howard and we were all of in VIP of course because we're VIPs and so that was a wonderful fun night my first time meeting him and he's such a great personality um, and um you know, on the dance scene, I think his company is celebrating, I want to say 23 years. I hope I got that right. But he'll correct me. Hopefully he comes on soon. And just look, okay, just body, honey, body down. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. Yes. Oh, thank you for that. Yes. The sentencing today for George Floyd. Um, ooh, I do see that there are people that were not pleased with the sentencing and the amount of the time. And, you know, I don't want to go into that right now because it, it's just, it's a lot. And I feel for the family, my heart goes out to the family and to those people that defaced his statue in Brooklyn, karma, that's all I'm gonna say. And Newark actually, so big up for big uh, prayers for George Floyd's family and his, his beloved friends and family. So thank you for, that reminder, yes, I was watching the sentencing today, but um, again, more on the peace and love and joy. Yes, come on, Daniel Gwertzman. I believe he's watching, so I'm hoping that you'll 
send me a request or I'll bring you in very soon. We just, just look at this, this is beautiful, beautiful. So a little bit about my guest today, Daniel Gertzman. Um, this quote, yes, it is 23rd anniversary. It says 2021 marks their 23rd anniversary season and they are known for their innovation, musicality and charismatic dancing and they believe everyone can join the dance. I love that because obviously I live by the Alvin Ailey Credo dances came from the people and should always be delivered back to the people everyone can dance right um he's deborah jower from the village voice has called him a tall lanky loose-limbed guy when he kicks the leg out witnesses his arm wheels his arms around or indulges in spates of very fast intricate steps he stirs up the space and makes it contract and expand around him he gets under the skin of the music he loves blending casualness with precision he passes his style on to his lively performers without impinging on their individuality. I love that. Described as a Willoughby John Travolta. I need to ask him about that. Come on, John Travolta. <laughs> Sensual, playful, a ragdoll, unusually supple, and one who moves like the wind. Daniel has toured nationally and internationally with concert dance companies, including Garth Fagan, Mark Morris Dance Group, and of course, Daniel Gertzman Dance Company. Recent performance and credits include Playhouse at Abrams Art Center, Lincoln Center Out of Doors with Burnt Sugar. I was at that show. It was amazing. Uh, the Ailey City Group Theater and La Mama and Dixon Place. Yes. Praise for the entertaining flair, stylistic diversity, musicality. His choreography has been performed at venues throughout the U.S. and abroad. He has choreographed modern musical theater or ballet, jazz, and contemporary dances for his own and other companies and departments, including the Rochester City Ballet, North Carolina Dance Theater, the University of Tulsa, the University of Michigan, North Carolina School of the Arts, the Ailey School, Princeton University, NYU, Barnard, Duke, the University of the Arts from my hometown, Philly, yes. The Interlochen Center for the Arts and LaGuardia High School for Performing Arts. Oh, let's see. Yes. So, yes. Many things to ask, and I can't wait to bring him in. So, I believe he is in my request. Let me get out of this gorgeous photo. Yay, pride! <laughs> and go bring in Daniel. Yes, he's here. Let's see what happens. Yes! Danny G. <laughs> hello, hello. Happy pride. Happy Pride, Daniel. You know, I just realized as I was coming on, like, we have the same initials. Oh. So if we were ever to get married, we wouldn't have to change the towels. <laughs> oh, listen, I realized that a long time ago. And but what you don't know is that I'm Danny G, too. Like, my friends have been calling me Danny G for years. So Are you serious? We're so Danny Gs? Absolutely, which we also share with Dolce & Gabbana. I'm just saying it doesn't hurt when you're shopping, you know, to find something with our initials on it. It doesn't hurt. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> How are you? Thank you for doing this today on this wonderful Friday. I, I, I know you have a busy weekend, so I thank you for taking the time. Well, yeah, we have our live launch in two hours. So it's really exciting to be able to just start the momentum, you know, because we're already adrenalized, as you know, in production week and just keep cruising right through to opening. So thank yeah. you. It's a joy to be here. Well, I want to get to that for sure. But of course, we yeah. have to do a little story time. So just, just. Tell us how you're doing, how you've been coping through the pandemic, how you're feeling today. Obviously, you're feeling happy and alive, and you got this big premiere tonight. But how have you been doing? How's your family? How your loved ones? Thank you. Thank you for asking that. I mean, how could the year not shape everybody, right? I feel fortunate that in terms of like professional work, that I was able to pivot, for the most part, in a smooth way. Mm -hmm. And we can talk more about shop later. But just because dance films and working online has been something that I've been involved with. Um, but since you asked me this question, um, I need to just share that I lost my father this year. Um, oh. And it was not from the pandemic, he had Parkinson's, but oh. that was a moment, seven months ago. My father, I'm happy to share that because I'm happy to talk about him and celebrate him, right? That's how, yes. we, it's how we honor our ancestors. It's how we just give praise to why we're here and doing what we're doing. And so it, it shaped the year a lot and it really fuels me to just keep digging deep and, you know, putting things in perspective and making sure that Lemonade just keeps getting made and, and just waking up every day in touch with him and, and just being thankful for the gifts yes. he bestowed. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Well, my condolences yeah. to you still, though. Yeah. And yeah. Again, you're Thank absolutely you. right, celebrating him and his memory and being in touch with him every day. I love that. You know, it's so interesting. 
I mean, my mother, thankfully, is still with us, and she's 74 this year, and she's in Philly. She's, I'm going to see her tomorrow, actually, and, Great. you know, I, you know, months go by sometimes before I see her, even though I'm just in New York, and with the pandemic, of course, more time had gone by, and it really made me realize, like, I need to see her more, and even if it's just getting her an iPhone so we can FaceTime, so now we have our little FaceTime hour every day, and I get to see her, and just... Make sure she's okay to see her face and hope for her to see my face as well. And so that's so important. And Absolutely. So, I mean, yeah. the seize the day moment is really the lesson for all of us to just live by, right? All the time. We can't wait to think we're going to catch up at another time. And unfortunately, I, I have always been close with my family and uh, they're up in Rochester, not far from the city. So even with the pandemic, um, I made efforts and was able to, to see my parents during that time. So yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. That was my next question, actually, where you were from. And, you know, I always, and there's like young people watching, and I know you're, you know, you're serious about education and, yeah. and your curriculum and all of this. But just for my own edification, growing up in Rochester, how do you get involved in, in dance? It's such a perfect question because Rochester, first, I'm going to start with how I started and then sort of answer that a little bit more deeply. I, I, was born a dancer. I mean, I you understand that. And I say that also because my mother has notes in my baby book that I was sitting like a dancer, stretching like a dancer as a baby, which was just noteworthy because there really weren't any professional dancers in the family. Although my parents loved to dance and they were swing dancers and that was always yeah. you know, a highlight. So yeah, my father had a lot of gay spirit. He had a lot of just spirit in general, but I say that because he loved the arts, he loved dance, he loved musical theater and, and I received that in large part. But I started folk dancing, um, Israeli folk dancing, when I was in kindergarten, first grade, did that all the way through high school, performed at town hall in the city, you know, <laughs> when I was in high school, part of a performing troupe. Mm -hmm. But Rochester is the hometown of Garth Bagan Dance. Yes. And yes, I know you know that, but all of our viewers may not. Um, and I was a bucket baby. And <gasps> just to explain what that means for those that don't know the history of Garth Bagan's company, Garth started the bottom of the bucket, but dot, 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 dance theater in 1970, which is amazing, 51 years ago. And he started it because he had this vision to cultivate dancers that may have been previously untrained, but it fit into his philosophy of not having to break habits and, and a, a mold, but to be able to shape a dancer in the way that he was interested. So I was really fortunate to start studying when I was 12 years old with the company in a, a building that the company then used. It was called the Educational Opportunity Center. Oh, wow. Downtown, in downtown Rochester, I took the bus, I was going downtown and it, no mirrors, no, you know, it was not a studio, it was a gym. It was mm -hmm. a big concrete gym. And that, that was the home. And those were just some of the most thrilling moments of my life and certainly gave me this, you know, indoctrinated me with this incredible balance of discipline and expression. Yes. And anyway, I, I'm happy to just share that. So that's really how Rochester helped frame me as a dancer, because I had this opportunity to study with company members, world class. I mean, when I was 15, the company went to Africa, Danny, for six weeks. And not only did they go, but a reporter from the Rochester Democrat and Crown Chronicle went with the company. And I'm talking, I mean, I don't want to misquote, so I'll say at least a dozen <laughs> dancers, and plus or minus, with a reporter. They were in five countries. And they were, they were full page, you know, on the art section. So how exciting to be <laughs> yeah. studying with this company, having them be in Africa for six weeks. I went to the airport the night they came back. There was a big party oh, at the no airport. Way. So, um, so, so that really informed a lot oh, of my early training. So my, my, one of my really good friends, Zinda, is on here. And she has, you know, Zinda, Zinda, Zinda and I share a birthday. Zinda and I are playing. No! Oh, yeah. Zinda and I, Zinda, I've known since that time, I mean. I adore Zinda. She's the best. She is the best. Yeah. I'm hoping yeah. she's in Philly now, too. I'm hoping to see her this weekend. Well. I think she's home right now. But such a small world. I love that. Yeah. So you must have been around, obviously, with um, PJ and Natalie. PJ, PJ and Natalie and Steve. And yeah, absolutely. I mean, th that's my dance family and uh, family beyond that. I mean, um, Garth was at my wedding, you know, so it's been a really close um, mentoring relationship all these years. And I think you you know how singular the company works and, and, and yes. what, it's, what its pedagogy and philosophy is. And so it, if you spend time in that company, you know, it's it really 
has a beautiful and deep impression. So yeah, I'm grateful mm -hmm. for all of that. I just, you know, when Garth came to set Jukebox for Alvin on, on the company with us, Ailey, yeah. man, yeah. what we did, the, the, it was a sex tap, but then it was like the larger group work and this beautiful solo for Desmond Richardson. But, you know, his work, as you, a lot of people know, is not easy. And I just yeah. remember our thighs were on fire. <laughs> <laughs> and that just reminded me of a dancey set for GTH called Footprints. Uh, I don't want to misquote anything, and I'm just reaching Footprints in Red. Not mm -hmm. positive, but um, yeah, that's that, and uh, that relationship with with Miss Jamison, I know, is always really important uh, to Garth as well. Yes, I'm so happy for him that he had the success with Lion King and just all of that reach for him. Like how wonderful, how wonderful. And you know, you saying that you you did folk dance. Um, yeah. I was on this program you know, last night actually, a Black Dance Story with Charmaine Warren, yeah, and yeah, we we're yeah. talking about our early, you know dance experience and I wasn't taking any kind of formal classes but in my elementary school this is a regular public elementary school uh for whatever reason my second grade teacher she she introduced my class to the arts and you know on the weekends I would watch these old films with my mom and they were always old classic musicals or whatever and so I was the only one in my second grade class that knew how to do the minuet in the wall. So she was teaching, was it a, was a female identifying teacher, did you say? She was, so yeah. she was teaching not just like folk dances, she was really comprehensive in teaching different forms, it sounds mm -hmm. like. That's yeah. right. Well, and I'm so glad you brought up about your wedding because yesterday was the 10th anniversary of marriage equality for New York State. So when did you get married? Yeah, well, it's exactly right. We had a date in um, just before, so we got married in 2013. My husband is from Greece. And at that time, the Defense of Marriage Act had not been repealed. Mm. So there were a lot of, you know, we had a date, we were set, we were clear that we wanted to. And my family was concerned, you know, what might happen. Because even though my sister who married an Italian, he could become a citizen at that point, you know, I mean, that was just the law. And mm -hmm. we said, we're getting married anyway. And then in June, just literally weeks before we got married, that was was repealed. And that was a, uh. joy, a joyous day, you know, um, yeah, so absolutely. It's well, so congrats on that, man. I mean, it's just, I mean, going into this weekend, besides obviously your your film debut and, and your events this weekend, what are you, are you doing anything special for Pride Sunday? Well, I was just going to say, like, it was, it was intentional to launch this platform during New York City Pride. Like, mm -hmm. that was planned back when we planned the date. It could have been July or earlier in June. Like, because this program is so clearly prideful and it's, and it's mm, embrace of everybody can dance, certainly, yes. like really embodying that. And then it's yes. just really colorful. I think you've seen some of that in the, in the marketing, like mm -hmm. that we're just really wanting it to be vibrant and joyful. And of course, the struggle is real, continues, like that's the theme. I mean, we, but at the same time, when, we, when, when one works for that on a daily basis, when one's living with it and is aware of it, there has to be the time to, to pause and celebrate. And that's, yeah. you know, that's what's happening too. So mm -hmm. while well, our event continues through Sunday, so, um, you know, I'll be celebrating Pride in the best way, which is sharing a culmination of, of years of work with, with viewers and, um, you know, really being able to, to usher people into this world of dance and demystify yeah. conscious dance. And it's called Parade, right? Or is it? Parade, parade is one of the three premieres. So the, the, mm -hmm. the, 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 the launch is Dance With Us. And, right. you know, um, so Parade is, is very... Um, it's very prideful. It's, I mean, the cast is clad in pink. And of course, that's just a knee jerk way to say it somehow it's something to do with pride. But I think that, you know, in choosing to just really have bold colors, like to, to live boldly uh, yes. is, a, is a choice. Yes. And um, yeah, so Parade is um, opening tonight's program. It's a little curtain opener uh, <laughs> of dance film. I love it. So just so you guys know, first of all, thank you for joining us today. I'm talking with Daniel Gertzman. He's based here in New York, choreographer, dancer, educator, filmmaker, producer, all of the above. And links to everything he's talking about right now are in my bio. So Daniel's link tree, Danny G, <laughs> is in my bio, as well as a link to the event that, of which he speaks, um, where you can RSVP tickets. Is there a price? I didn't check if there was oh, a price. Oh, it's free. No. and then Oh, it's free. Absolutely. And see, that's the other thing. Like, that's that's the commitment. And there's so much pride that the company has in that as a nonprofit, even though budget-wise, it 
just honestly doesn't make sense. It makes yeah. sense, you know, um, philosophically that mm -hmm. that's, that's our commitment to equity and access. Like there are more than just hours. There are days of footage available. This is a library that, that yeah, that this, this platform is housing and it's mm -hmm. all designed to get people introduced to dance for those that think they know nothing about it or, or don't know much to, to professionals and experts. Like it's not dumbing anything down, but it has a, a real range of providing sort of a nuts to bolts, what is dance and really looking at it through the, through the modern dance idiom mm -hmm. um, but that commitment is just exciting we received some leadership support from the rockefeller brothers fund two years oh, ago wonderful. and and with that it really it really is thank you we're we're just blessed to have to have built an educational program that could attract um that interest and so we made a commitment then and said look we'll just keep fundraising but we don't want it to be gated so yes anybody who's watching and wants to come tonight um you can go to the link that's in the link tree it's dgdc dash dance with us dot eventbrite dot com and it'll take you there or you could just search for dance with us plus Gwertzman it'll come up and yeah just get it just get a ticket for free just to have the link you know sent to you and it's going to be on Vimeo live tonight that we're doing it we're keeping and everything is it interactive um the the live event is interactive with a Q&A uh, oh, that's great. Gonna, so there's there, the program is an hour it's seven to eight and we have three nights. So tonight, Dante Paleo, artistic director of the Limon Dance Company is our co-host. Yes. So Dante's with us tonight. Tiffany Ray Fisher is with us tomorrow. I know. Really, and she's got her own premiere going on with um, Harlem Stages. Uh, e -moves, uh, is happening tonight right. um, as well this weekend. Um, but she's going to be with us tomorrow night. And, and then Sunday night, Sean Curran from Sean Curran Company. So we have a guest post every night for an hour. Then we have a Q&A, which is completely interactive because it's an opportunity to field questions, to sh share comments, and I'm looking forward to that. And then we're finishing off with a half hour dance party. And <laughs> I, I heard your Willowy John Travolta uh, comment as I was waiting to come in. And so I'm a disco baby, you know, hello. You know, that's yeah. just, I grew up with in that era and with my parents, you know, inviting their friends over and all doing disco dances. And that was just my thing. I was Disco Danny as, as a kid. Um, and so I'll be teaching the bus stop tonight. It's become a signature dance. You know, yes. everybody doing it, the hustle, right? And so a Willowy, Willowy John Travolta, that was actually a quote from the Martha's Vineyard Times um, a long time ago. Um, mm -hmm. But just a looseness in the body and, yeah. and again, enjoying, enjoying the Travolta, you know, <laughs> it's audience proof nobody you know or participant proof i want to yes. say like nobody ever gets tired of dancing a saturday night fever absolutely not you know it's so interesting um years ago in my you know touring music days i was on a tour with gloria Gaynor, who actually i booked this summer for the summer stage to coney island i can't yes. wait oh dg so gets fun. gg in the house gg <laughs> but um, on the tour as well was that group Tavares. And I know that yeah. one of the BG songs, um, mm -hmm. oh, I'm drawing a blank. Hey. Uh, if I Can't Have You, maybe? Oh. Ooh. Oh, I can't think of the song. But it was also a song that the BG sang, but also Tavares yeah. had on one of their albums. Yeah. And stuff. It's, if I remember, I'll think about it later. But it doesn't matter. Anyway, I love the era of music as well. Well, the era of real music. With, yeah, it's, it's also a tour with Sister Sledge and. <laughs> I mean, especially in Europe, right? Anywhere we will go with We Are Family or Gloria getting with I Will Survive, I mean, the place just loses it. And so it's great music. It it's is timeless. great. It's, it's timeless. It's timeless. Yeah, it's classic. Yeah. You know, disco oh. kind of got a bad rap for a while, and then there was a whole movement against it and disco sex, and yet more people are still listening to that music. Ex absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And so since you've al always been working in the digital realm and film work and everything else, so working this way is wasn't new to you, but obviously not being able to be in person with your dancers, how did you work in choreographing these this new project? Yeah, so we started working together actually pretty early on. In mm -hmm. August, we came together last August for residency. Because okay. again, this, this platform was already in, in the works. It was already, mm -hmm. you know, in development. And we were supposed to do some live performances, of course, like, not of course, but as most companies had, you know, a, an itinerary plan. Mm -hmm. So last summer, what was supposed to be a, a new evening length work called Fantasyland 
we turned into something called the Fantasyland Project. Mm -hmm. And that was last July. And that was a remote project. So I'm mm -hmm. stepping back a step first. Um, we, it was for 16 dancers in 16 remote locations. And I met with everybody one-on-one, -on -one, 16 solos, developed, you know, a remote work. But I was really adamant at that time, Danny, that I didn't want to see anybody in their living room, which, mm -hmm. is, which is not, you know, um, an indictment against all those that did. It was just that I felt, you know, like we should get outside. It was summer, yeah. you know? And so it was really exciting. And the Fantasyland Project, which premiered last summer, now has a permanent home for free on the platform. So that'll, oh, that's awesome. that'll be there too. So that was a way to just kind of keep working. Like there was a, you know, money had been allocated for rehearsals. Like it felt important yeah. to let, you know, there be some way to keep uh, the dancers morale up besides you know some income of course but just to like still immediately three months into the pandemic have a project to work on yes and then august was really at the beginning when companies that were able to were coming together in a safe way we had a residency outside the city upstate nice we, we tested we had our own bubbles we masked we worked outside nice. so the the dance films that were premiering tonight are all you know, from that residency and from that time. That's for you. Yeah, I mean, I'm just so charged and encouraged and so thankful that these these bubble residencies yeah. cropped up and were happening for so many people. Which, which, if you can say, which residency were you a part of? Yeah, so this is a residency that's unique. It's a center called the Treman Center in Ooh. Newfield, New York, which is three hours um, going north from the city. And it's really, uh, we were the first dance company to be in residence. It was uh, a relationship that I cultivated with the owner who was an art, is an art lover and a dance lover and was excited to be able Thank to- Thank God for these people. And, and, and timing's always everything. Yeah. So part of that piece happening also had to do with the pandemic and with the fact that the timing just worked to be able to, you know, with cancellations and things, uh, it's an event site, and it's a site that would normally have a lot of weddings and different things. Mm -hmm. And so we were able to, again, you know, you got to be resourceful. And I've, I've always operated that you just, you ask, and if somebody says no, you say thank you. And if somebody says yes, you say thank you. Exactly. You, you know? Say, say that again for the children in the back. Well, but I, you know, my family laughs at me sometimes, but I really believe it, you know? Yes. It, you, you have to broadcast your need. There's no... There's no shame in the ask. It's always respectful. It's sincere. I'm the steward of a nonprofit. I have no problem just asking. And if the answer is no, I say thank you. And exactly. It's just yes, no. I say thank you. You know. <laughs> you know, it's it's interesting. I, I I'm the same way. I I mean, obviously, when you're younger and you get a no and you're all crushed, but you know, you just find a different way. And sometimes a no is a blessing. You know, we don't yeah. see until later. But, you know, but either way, you're learning something, you're, you're learning something in the process of it all. So it, it's always a gift, whether it's a yes or a no, it's always a gift. And so I love that sentiment. I love that thinking, you know, I love that way of thinking. And, and so what, I mean, obviously you have this, this big premiere this weekend, but what about in person in theaters? Do you guys have any plans? I mean, I'll just say that this has exhausted a lot of our resources. <laughs> this has been oh. a two-year, well, which isn't to say we don't have things coming up. I mean, we, we do. We have a, a two-year project coming to fruition tonight, but the platform's a dynamic living museum. That's a living museum, as a museum really, I think, always is. I mean, the Metropolitan Museum of Art is not a museum that's static and ossified. Of course not. It's right, always infused with new art and acquisitions yeah. and, and engagement, like, dance, Monica Bill Barnes and people dancing in the museum. Yes. Um, so I think um, it's important to know that monthly we're going to be adding a premiere to the platform and we'll be sharing previews of that at the end of our program tonight. So nice. we're, still, we're still shooting, we're still editing, we're producing that. And then by December we have um, like a little Florida tour happening now. So, you know, we're... we're oh, good. Yeah. So the in-person will be, will be here as well this year. Um, but we're also committed to this platform and continuing to create content for it. So That's it's a place awesome. that people want to visit more than once, you know? Yeah. So where, where in the city are you? We're in Washington, the Heights, in the Heights. You're in the, in the Heights? Heights? Well, in, in the Heights for a long time. So in the Heights for actually for longer than the company. And um, I'm just getting a time check from my assistant. Yes. Oh, we're good. We're cool. We got time. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. Um, 
So, you know, when I, I, my mother was born in the Heights. Um, my aunt was born in the Heights. I had cousins that grew up in the Heights. So I used to visit, here's a story. When I was a preteen, I would go to visit a favorite cousin in the Heights. I didn't just get on a plane by myself. I had my black roller skates with red wheels over my shoulder on the plane. You know, like the big boot ones with the big chunky wheels. So he could take me to Central Park because it was just the end of that era where all the, you know, dancers were skating in the park. Not that it still doesn't happen, but really when it was the end of that heyday. Yes. And I just wanted to be around it. I, you know, mm -hmm. it was just like the most thrilling. Um, my cousin tried to teach me how to drive up in the Heights. It's very hilly. <laughs> I had my permit, it didn't go so well. But uh, the Heights is home. Um, just the site of the Wa George Washington Bridge. And oh the my gosh. Here, uh, okay, you know. so I won't tell you, you don't have to tell me your address here, but I'm in the Heights as well. So when, once this weekend is over, maybe, you know, in the next week or two or three, we can meet in person for a cocktail. <laughs> Deal, absolutely. I love living up here. I've lived in the Heights now for 20 years. Yeah, all right. So I've been up here since 97. Wow. And, and I was just going to say, like, at that time, people weren't moving up to the Heights unless... No, the, they weren't. You know, actually, they, they weren't moving up to the Heights. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, you lived in the Heights or you didn't. And, and the beautiful thing about the neighborhood for those that aren't Manhattanites or New Yorkers is just when you're on the tip of either tip of the island, you know, people aren't generally coming through your neighborhood like Chelsea is a parade all the time. And it's fun, but it's, you know, it's lovely to live in a neighborhood that, right, feels like a yes. neighborhood. Yeah. Um, and um, so that was before Starbucks came. It was before Staples okay. came. It was, you know, just the neighborhood. It was, yes. but it's always been a solid neighborhood. And, yes. and uh, the mix of certainly the Dominican population, over 80%, with the old Jewish community and okay. the Irish community and, you know, German Irish. I mean, so it's, it's another microcosm like Astoria or like Queens as a whole, it's true. you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. I love it up here. And I love walking to the cloisters. I love going by the little red lighthouse. Yes. It's just so peaceful. I want, actually, okay. I have to admit it wasn't until the pandemic that I discovered the, the pathway to finally get to the, to the lighthouse. The pedestrian bridge over <laughs> from 181st street, just, but you know, the thing is, you've still discovered something that more than 95% of people that live in the city know. Because again, it's just how often, you know, do you explore? And if you, I feel like there's a lot more tourists internationally coming to the cloisters than, you know, people in New York have necessarily seen the jewel in Manhattan's crown. That's that it is. And the yeah. Met, the Met cloisters is gorgeous. Absolutely. Oh my God, that's a beautiful location. And even yes. I've to during the pandemic, like the height of it really, because my boyfriend lives in Jersey, but I would like walk across the George Washington yeah. Bridge. <laughs> yeah. And, and meet him on the other side, he'd pick me up over there. It's so funny. And, and it is historic. I mean, the Little Red Lighthouse has a history. I mean, it's not functional now, but it was to save ships from crashing into the yeah. shore because of the current. And, you know, it's, it's Washington Heights for a reason and the Revolutionary Army and all that. So, um, and it's also a surprise to a lot of people how picturesque it is. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't think of, of that much, you know, greenery and just different kind of um, natural scenes. Yeah, and, those, and the rock, the rock sculptures, that magical thing over there. That's but I, want to back to dancing. I know you have like not too much time, but I definitely want to ask you, are you dancing? Are you still dancing? What's going on with that body? Oh my God, I'm still dancing. Yes. Um, thank, thankfully, yes. I mean, to me, that is, you know, we all have our, we all bear and have our thorns, but that is a, that is just a huge gift that um, I'm I'm whole, um, you know, and able to, you know, and I I think that it'll never stop in whatever way it might have to be adjusted. Certainly, you know, mm. I, I think of somebody like Merce uh, Cunningham who performed, you know, as as long as he was wanting to, really, which yes. was at a very advanced age. Yeah, um, and 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 so many other people, you know. This is funny, I had a question from a playwright who's writing a play about a dancer and just got in touch with me through friends on Facebook, like I didn't know this person, but needed help about, and I said, sure, you know, give me a call. And you know, asked, is it, is it realistic to have a dancer you know, after 35? And I was like, what? You know, <laughs> but, but again, it's these myths, right? Like I understood where it was coming from. People that don't know think you, you have to be young and then your career, you know, I mean, even, um, with the Actors Fund and career transitions for dancers and like dancers over 40, like it's like, let's yes. over 50, like, because 
dancers over 40, of course, like that's, you know, that's everybody now. Yes. Now, I mean, you talked about Desmond before. I mean, I'm just thinking about like our great dancers that right? are become more burnished. And, and why would it be any different than it is in another field? You yes. know, I mean, the opera singer has that luxury of knowing that as they age, their instrument will continue to um, gain that depth and that finery, mm. um, that fine quality. And of course, the same holds true for us as dancers. We're just working against literally gravity, right? Like we're, <laughs> you know, so we're, it's just that sweet spot yeah. that intersects where we know how to do it. And maybe the leg isn't quite as high, but we know how to sculpt that leg. And yes. That's, and that's the thrill. I mean, listen, when I got into Ailey, I was going into, I was talking about this yesterday. I was going into a company that has senior members that were, you know, well into their thirties, early forties. And it was such a time. I mean, we're talking like Marilyn Banks, Dudley yeah. Williams. Dudley, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. even just, you know, throughout the pandemic, um, you know, so my whole thing flipped to vir virtual with Summer Stage. And one of the dance films I did, um, Love Letter to New York, my co-collaborator, my, collab my co collaborators, we, um, we shot and had Gus Solomon. And he, he stayed in his chair. And all he did was his arms and this and that. And it was amazing. And we were all sobbing. I mean, it was just like... That's Absolutely. All you do. Right, because I mean, any gesture that Gus would do is so <laughs> informed with intentionality, understanding, and meaning that yeah. it's, it's a privilege to just see an artist, a mature artist, work. You know, yeah. Um, Interesting in this country of, you know, I mean, and it's very youth oriented, as we yeah. know, in all realms, in all disciplines, in all employment But this this idea of you know, once you hit thirty or forty, you're not valid. You're done. And I just think, you know, there's so much, like you just said, there's so much value there. And there's so much to treasure in our older dancers or more mature, burnished yeah. dancers. I think that's changing, Danny. I'm really optimistic because this generation now really values authenticity. I, it's, it's, that's I mean, true. I, I'm just can't... speaking, you know, my estimation, but working with, with students at the, um, you know, high school and collegiate level, like my, my sense is that just in the way, you know, like body types and dance has had just such tremendous breakthroughs, finally. I mean, while it's a conversation that we're, should, you know, shouldn't be having in 2021 about a body type, but, but, right. but, it's, but it's really changing because um, I see that, you know, the young generations that are coming into, you know, their own really understand that value that um, comes with, with age, experience, wisdom, you know. So I'm encouraged by that. I, yeah. I wanted to ask you a question. Sure. Because you mentioned summer stage. And so, you know, I'm just curious, like, now that we're coming back and you're coming back in summer stage and, you know, just if you could just talk about like that feeling, having had this terrible pause, but like what, what it feels like to be back in this thing that always was great, but in a way we take, we took for granted, even though yeah. it was, even though we might not have taking it for granted with each performance, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I do. I mean, you know, working with me, I mean, we haven't had the pleasure of working together yet, as yet, but, you know, I'm really, I'm really hands-on with my programs. I mean, you know, I, I tell the story all the time about my injury and, you know, so I'm very thoughtful about, you know, the stage and the Marley and like, I, I literally, I drive my crew crazy, but once they lay that Marley down, I, I walk the entire Marley barefoot, I want to know what's under there. Don't take it up. Sweep, sweep it again. So yeah, super invested always in my programs on day one, which again, working in the work that we do, I don't take any of it for granted. I'm so thankful for it, being able to do the work that I do. And so obviously getting all knocked out last summer was devastating simply because having to, in theory, snatch work away from artists and, and money was an awful, awful feeling. And so... Yeah. Even though I was able to, you know, pay the performers that performed for us virtually, which felt good, it still wasn't close to what they would have made if they'd actually done live. So it was something. But being able to get back to this place, like, okay, this might sound crazy, yeah. but I literally started crying when I sent my first contract. No, yeah, I get it. Well, it, 
it, it feels emotional. really good. And the, the first the first show back was um, uh, last week now with uh, Wynton Marsalis and Jazz at Lincoln Center. And honestly, just to see, uh, I mean, the setup is different this year because we couldn't afford, because it's all the money that we lost as a foundation, but we couldn't afford to put up our big monstrous stage. But we're, you know, we're making do and we're being very transparent with our artists. Don't come thinking it's going to look like it did in 2019 with that brand new, this is what we have. Yeah, yeah. So be patient with us. So it's about transparency. And so, you know, looking at the audience coming into the venue and hearing, you know, people talking, it's, it's, it's all that, that, that hearing stuff and hmm. yeah. the applause. And I could, I mean, I was watching Winton and the band. I mean, I, I've met Winton, worked with Winton, but I spent more time watching the audience and just seeing them like so happy to be there and just smiling and it, it was it was I'm getting chills now. It is such yeah. a great feeling. And so my first show up that I'm responsible for is the Gloria Gaynor show. So the surviving diva. Uh, but my first full on dance show is not until July 25th. Um, it's one event. So please pray for me for the weather. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Absolutely. I know. How many times have we we done that in our careers, right? And, but life always has the winning hand, you know? I mean, yeah. that's, that's just it. You have to be resilient. And I think as dancers, you know, and as dance practitioners in the field, it's so inherent in our mm -hmm. DNA because just as you talk about the stage, the space, it's always different one day to the next. Even the same rehearsal studio you work in because yeah. of humidity or what have you, the climate right. affects us in a way it's different than, yes. right? And then you're traveling from Marley to Marley. And yeah. So, that's a small example, but really writ large, we're learning just from a choreographer saying, now do it twice as fast, or let's cut that out and just go to here, you know? And oh, yeah. Like, like right before opening night curtain and being right. able- Right, I mean, dancers, we have, I think artists in general, but really dancers, yeah. we have to be so flexible and adaptable, just, you know, for everything that, can, that might happen. And, you know, with my, with my one show, you know, it didn't quite feel right to only have one artist with, when so many companies are looking to get back on stage. And so luckily I was able to galvanize and get six companies uh, to send either a solo, because, you know, we didn't know that the city was going to open up, right? So we went to be exactly. as safe as possible, the smallest number of people on stage as possible. So I'm doing an evening of mostly solos and trios or the thing, but the largest is Rennie Harris with eight people. And yeah. so- great. You know, my dance shows at Summer Stage have always felt like family. Well, you've been, you know, family reunions, you know, when we were up I the love that you started with that. Yeah. And yeah. so I, I just, I just can't wait to see everybody because I know I'm going to know everybody in that audience and this is going to be a big old family reunion and the backstage energy. I, just, I can't wait. I can't wait. So I hope you can make it. Thank you. It's on the calendar. I mean, and I just want to say, um, I knew you were meeting with Charmaine last night, who I love and um, has been a, a great support through many years. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm glad you were, we were just too busy getting ready for tonight, but I'm so glad that you had that conversation. And oh, great. It. Yeah. Big, but, you know, you're, all you're, of it. You're talking as the impresario. I mean, it's like, it's when the restaurant doors open, it's the proprietress who's welcoming, you know, <laughs> the patrons. It's like, yes. that is the rush. Um, it I is. Just, yeah. It is. I, re I remember when I first, land at the the position at summer stage and my then director said wait till your first show and then it's going to really hit you and she was right but my first show was parsons and you know the rock star david parsons decided he was going to make a reappearance on the stage and i remember going walking past security line and just looking at the line of people waiting outside and that's when it hit me i was like wow they're coming to a show that i yeah. am well, producing ah! i mean Listen, I, I just wrote a note to friends and family a couple days ago saying premiere's coming up and so exciting and it's also fraught as it always is, even after 25 years of producing, yeah. it's, it's a tightrope. It's a tightrope for a reason. You yeah. know, it's the thrill of being on it. It's and thrill, right? <laughs> but yeah. It's thrill but, junkies. It really is. You really do get addicted to it. There's something addicting about it. But I know you're short on time, and I know you got to go soon. But please tell us again for anybody that just joined, what's happening this weekend, oh, and yeah. then I'll let you go. Well, sure. So Dance With Us is happening. And it doesn't mean you have to dance. It's actually the program is designed to view dance and to hear speaking about it. So what's really cool is that we've invited all of these 
former company members, current members, and guests that are not even dancers, but choreographers to narrate dances from the repertory. And so you have the option on this platform to watch a dance with music or to click the narration version. And then you'll hear, so Michael Novak is a guest with us. Um, yes, he is. He's with us every night virtually. And he, we have a beautiful um, message and more from Michael. He's narrating a dance that he had performed in when he was with the company years ago. A nice. dance he hasn't seen in, in a long time. And so there's, a, there's both an objective sense of somebody, well, in that case, Michael has a relationship. But um, so Tiffany Ray Fisher, for example, somebody that didn't dance in our work, but is narrating one of the dances. So there are these, there, so the idea is to learn ways to read dance, to immerse yourself in the world of dance. And so Dance With Us is happening. Um, and we're going to have three world premieres. Parade kicks off the show, followed by Willow, mm -hmm. which is uh, all three are ensemble works for large cast 11 dancers. And then finishing with Dollhouse. And again, I told you there's a lot of prideful themes, you know? I mean, I know I played with the Dollhouse growing up. Okay. And, okay. So, you know, it's, but you're going to have a chance to enter the Dollhouse. <laughs> and so we've just got some really cool scenes, original music, a, a lot awesome. of collaborators. So we're going to have a great time. And then it'll be followed by uh, a little dance party where I'm going to, you know, just encourage everybody to dance along with me and uh, get their groove on and bring in the pride weekend yeah so the ticket link you can join at any point during the weekend you can sign up whenever right you can it's the same program tonight tomorrow and sunday okay and even if you come in late the link will be there you can just come and join it's a different link for each night because it's a different mm -hmm. program but it's free for those yeah. of you who, who may have joined after i said that before so there's no reason not to come I yes. mean, and we have a great preview trailer which shows what it is so that um, I'm not sure if that's linked into your link tree, but it's in ours. Or if you go there, you'll you'll see it. And it, and it you know, gives you a little snapshot of what the event is. Yes, could be. I posted the um, I, I I shared it from your page. Uh, the trailer for parade. It's when oh, it okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so, just a little teaser. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I I never like to share too much when it's right. a new premiere. But the one minute preview is packed in that minute, Scott. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we've really got a lot of, of stuff planned. Um, I'm, yeah. I'm a maximalist when it comes to kind of giving giving a lot to the viewer. You know, you showed up, you made an effort, you're there, you, you planned the night. Um, uh, minimalist in terms of editing, but, you know, really like to, like you know, put on a, a big show when Absolutely. possible. Hey, listen, is Derek still dancing with you? He is, indeed. You know, I didn't realize he was in your company. I went to your website just to, like, you know, poke around for information. And I was like, why do I know his face? And then I was like, oh, my God, he danced with Spectrum with Donald Byrd. He most certainly did. Oh, he's and, gorgeous. Well, yes. And um, I'm so glad you brought him up because Derek, who has been working with the company, so just before he went out to Seattle to start working with, with Donald, so and then when he came back, continued working. So going back 10 years now, he's been working with the company. And um, Derek was a student of mine before that at the University of Michigan when I was a visiting professor uh, early on in his pre-professional career. Mm -hmm. So Derek is a featured dancer tonight with leading roles. Oh, yes, he okay. is holding the stage. Derek is a gorgeous dancer, a gorgeous man. And it's yeah. really exciting to, to cultivate and be part of that cultivation over years, right? How meaningful yes. it is to see the progress and the process of becoming a dancer. Because there's never yes. any finishing point to that. Like, you know, we're not going to be the dancer tomorrow that we are today. We just keep striving. We just keep working to find more juice. And, and we yes. do. Yeah. So I'm, I'm glad awesome. you mentioned it. And also, Derek has, um, has introduced through the years this a wonderful relationship with Donald, too, that I've really valued so much. I consider him a wonderful mentor. And yes. really just anytime there's an opportunity to not only see his incredible work, but hear him talk. Um, oh, I know. You know Donald's yeah. amazing. I got to work with him at Ailey when he came back to rehearse my cast for Shards and Dance at the Gym. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's a wonderful man. So wonderful. And presenting him was wonderful. Like getting to know him better during that process of, you know, bo booking his company at Summer Stage. But also Vanessa uh, the Martinez. Am I saying Vanessa that right? Bar yes, Vanessa Martinez de Baño. So Vanessa and Derek are both featured, you know, as, as principal dancers. We don't have that nomenclature in the company. You yeah. know, we're all dancers. But in terms of just how much you'll see them with solo work and such, 
Vanessa also, she's been working consistently with us since 2014. Yes. She's a phenomenal dancer, exquisite, and just, again, a, a dear, dear. Yeah, I met, worked Vanessa. with her with Double Take Dance. Yes, yes, yes. So there's so yes. much, I just love that, again, the dance world is like this, and we just. We do. We're here for each other, that's it, that's it. So any... Well, we inspire each other. I mean, yes. I'm inspired by all the work that's happening, you know, with our colleagues, and it's just, it's like, okay, we're gonna keep going in this crazy fashion. Crazy in the sense of just how much work it is, not because there's anything, <laughs> you know, not normal about it. It's just yeah. because of the dedication that's required to, to be mm -hmm. in the field and to continue 20 plus years in production, you know? Right. Um, and, and that's where the meaning comes from, is just, yes the glory of all this great work that the community's doing and continues to do. Yes, well, thank you for this, taking this time on your big weekend and your premiere day. I'm so thankful for that. Oh, please, so I'm thrilled. Wonderful weekend and continue success and getting thank back you. out there. And I look forward to seeing the company on stage in person here in New York or wherever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah thank you. And we're gonna have a wine date in the Heights. Yes, so in, the Heights. Be, in the Heights, in the Heights. I will be in touch about that. <laughs> yes. Have a beautifully prideful weekend. And <laughs> To everybody watching, thank you for being here and just have a, a beautiful weekend all the way around. Yes. Thank you, Dan. Okay. Thank you so much. Yes. Bye. <laughs> bye. Bye, everybody. Bye bye. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. Oh, my God. That was awesome, Daniel Cornsmith. So, please, the link to his event tonight is in my bio and to his company. Um, all his information. So please support Daniel Gortzman's uh, efforts and his in his projects. And tune in tonight. Get your tickets. RSVP. Dance, dance, dance. It's pride, pride, pride. So thank you all. I did have another guest that wanted to join. I'm not sure if he's here. Um, my social media social part friend uh, Lamont Joseph wants to come on. I don't know Lamont. Are you here? Are you here, Lamont? Let me see if I have another request. I don't, but uh, well, I'll give it. I'll give it a few more moments before I sign off. But any questions for me? <laughs> oh, so in my talk last night, I mistakenly said, "Oh, you're there." Okay, hi. <laughs> Who's? Are you with Bloodline? <laughs> Send me a request. And so, um, the tickets for Little Island for the dance festival that I'm dancing in did not go on sale yesterday, like I thought they would. They were gonna. They are going to go on sale on Tuesday, the 29th now at 2 p.m. And so that's for the Little Island Dance Festival at the new venue on the Hudson and I'll be performing in September, September 19th. And um, yeah, so tickets will go on sale. I'll post about it and we'll see what happens. So let me see if I can bring in, boom, there we go. <laughs> yes. Oh, no. Oh, Lamont. So it's saying that you need the latest version of Instagram. Oh, no. So I don't know how fast I will update for you, but uh, I'm so sorry. Um, try to update, I don't know, maybe it'll take less than a minute and try to send me a request. But it's saying you need the latest version of Instagram. Hey team! So while we're waiting, I got about 10 minutes. Um, does anyone else wanna jump in and say a few things, tell us what you're up to? Um, again, my, my dance program with Summer Stage will be July 25th. So I believe, I believe because of the lifting of the restrictions on this city, uh, we're going to do away with RSVPs and tickets. I'm really hoping that's true. I'm not speaking out of turn. But uh, so stay tuned for that. Go to our website, check out the information on the different shows that you want to come to. Um, I believe the George Clinton show this weekend, we still have the, the, capacity limitations in place, uh, just because we just couldn't flip it that fast. But uh, going forward, we will be making an announcement about that on our website and our social, um, on what we're gonna be doing with uh, ticketing. Hey, Alex Dalton. So there, there was somebody else in the, in the chat that wanted to come in. Um, oh no, it was in the chat. But uh, anyway, I'm sitting here waiting for Lamont Joseph to send me a request because he wanted to come on and say a few words before I ended. Thanks again to Daniel Gertzman. And um, yeah, so once again, thanks to Maxwell, one of my previous guests, Wardman, for this amazing t-shirt that I got in the mail today from House of Ananda. And it says, Kiki with your soul, Kiki with your soul. And also once again, my girl Chloe Davis's 
the Queen's English. So pick that up if you can. History, Identity, and Pride. So it's perfect for this weekend that I want to bring this book out. And, you know, some of the... Some of the <laughs> yes! I love it. I feel like I just... Every so often, I'll just pick it up and just, you know, leaf through it. Words like gayborhood. And it gives you all the the meanings, want more info. I mean, it's just, it's so great. Dapper, Dapper Dom, Dairy. I mean, some of them are really funny. But I'm going to give it a few more moments to see if uh, Lamont can make it in from people. Uh, let me try one more time. Mm, it's still saying he's unable. Okay. Well, it's almost my time, and I thank you all for watching. Um, the mod, maybe we can pop in next week. I might do a freestyle next week for, for Independence Weekend. And uh, so we'll have you back. We'll have to have you back on. But thank you all for watching. Have a wonderful weekend, as always. And stay safe in these streets. You know the restrictions are lifted, but just stay safe. Just stay safe. Think about your fellow man. Be patient with each other. Be kind. Happy Pride. And I will see you next week. Take care. And thanks again to Daniel Gertzman. And please, RSVP for his event tonight and this weekend. Okay. Bye. See you next Friday. Happy Friday.